What's going on everyone and welcome to Movie Emporium's movie review of the new Netflix original miniseries, The Liberator. This series is created by Jeb Stewart and is directed by Greg Junkaitis. Uh, before we begin, hey, if you like my channel, of course, hit the subscribe button. Join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell, top of the panel is coming next. If you like any of the videos, awesome, hit that like button and comment below on any video that you watch, including this one. So The Liberator tells a true World War II story about a character named Felix Sparks who's played by Bradley James. And Felix Sparks was a commander of a group of people called the Thunderbirds, as well as a commander of the 152nd Infantry Regiment, which is what the Thunderbirds were part of. And the Thunderbirds were basically a group of people from the Southwest that included like American Indians, included Hispanics, and also included cowboy rancher people because of the nature of where it's located. And it basically shows throughout four episodes about an hour long each, kind of like the rise of heroics that Felix Spark uh, basically entailed as he went above and beyond his call of duty to the point where he was wounded and almost died and came back and served with his men. And it basically shows the kind of path and trajectory that this individual went on from leaving boot camp to his eventual and being in France to being in Germany to his eventual kind of liberating this prison camp that held Jewish uh, POWs. And it kind of shows his like going from like a being a rough and tumble, you know, wet behind the ears individual to being a guy who's affected truly by war. And throughout the, the miniseries, we see him write letters to his wife, Mary, and he talks about his like transformation a little bit about what he, what these men did to him what he did for these men how it changed him how they became so close and watching him watch you know his friends who unfortunately dies in this miniseries watch how that affects him and how you know he you know defies his orders a lot of times defies his you know commanders to the point where he eventually meets uh, General Patton and kind of like we learn about like what he actually did and how much he did and how his 500 days with the regiment and his 500 days in war really changed the tide of the whole World War II. And like I said, going above and beyond his call of duty. And so in a nutshell, that's the miniseries in a whole. It's about Felix Sparks and his story and then the people underneath him, which are, you know, there's major characters underneath him. But this is Felix Sparks' story. And so this miniseries is rather samey to something like Band of Brothers, and I don't mean that in a very derogatory way or a mean way. It's samey in the fact that it's about brotherhood and about uh, people in war and about the effective nature of war and how much it affects the consciousness and the brain and about the people you love end up being killed and so on and so forth. And so with that said, this miniseries has to set itself apart being something different than like a Band of Brothers or the Pacific. It has to find a way to engage you, but also be its own thing where you're focused on a particular regiment and so on and so forth. So you have to find a way to set yourself apart, to kind of make it unique, to kind of engage the audience. And I truly and honestly think that this miniseries does exactly that for better or worse. And the reason I say for better or worse is this miniseries does something really, really interesting. Now, I will start out with something called rotoscoping. If I, I talked about it in my Undone review, but rotoscoping is a way of animating over live action footage. So it gives it a very psychedelic feel. It gives it a very interesting kind of way things are presented. So you'll have the live action footage and uh, Richard Linklater did this like in Scanner Darkly and so on and so forth, where you'll have the characters on screen, they'll be filmed live action, and then either hand-drawn or computer animated, the characters will be animated over and they will be formed together in one nesting sequence. And it creates just a very unique perspective on filmmaking. It makes it for a very unsettling, weird, and kind of, like I said, psychedelic experience. But it makes it for a very unique way of, you know, a director to do films. But it's not the most popular of way of making films. A lot of people find it really kind of just too much. So with The Liberator, the director, Greg uh, Jokinas, uh, went a little bit further by creating something called trioscoping. And trioscoping is a form of basically shooting live actor, live action actors in front of like green screens or whatever they did, maybe small set pieces, and then completely CGIing everything around it, and then on top of that, animating over the you know the live action actors, and giving it a very I want to say like um, video gamey feel, or maybe a, like a pulp comic booky feel, or maybe like a painting in a lot of aspects, because the way we see it and the way it's shown everything feels truly kind of off and unsettling and weird and kind of 
you know, it doesn't feel like it's a wholly live action movie, but it also doesn't feel like it's a wholly anime movie. So it's like a, it's like a combined blend, almost like a Dr. Frankenstein, Jekyll and Hyde type of scenario. But it's so fascinating that it truly sets the, the miniseries apart from anything I've ever seen before. And this is one of the first efforts they've ever done to use this technology, which is wholly new and does something completely different, expanding and kind of, you know, pushing forward the idea of what rotoscoping is. But like I said, when I said for worse, this miniseries will be not for everyone. It's just because of the nature of how it's filmed, how it's animated, how it just looks completely different than everything that has ever been done before. People want to see traditional war movies, but when you try to experiment and try to do something completely different with that war movie or that war material, World War II material, it can make it for something that just doesn't feel right. There are points in this miniseries where... The, it looks cool, but like you could tell they're on a stage and nothing kind of completely feels fit and nothing completely completely feels, you know, like if it, it gels together. But there are times in this miniseries where the animation and the live action are so seamless that you just like are in awe of what they are trying to do when, you know, the American soldiers are fighting the German soldiers. And you see them in the middle of a snowy field and just like the nature of how gorgeous it looks, how it feels like a truly animated film, but there is some live action stuff going on there. It's a truly like amazing and kind of strange kind of new invention that I can't hate on them for that. But there are going to be people that I know that have to, I've talked to that really just don't understand the nature of the style of filmmaking that is going on here. And it's going to be a, it's going to be divisive in a lot of aspects, but I think if you can go with it, I think because it's only four episodes, I think if you can kind of get down with the idea of what the director and Jeff Stewart and the company behind all this new kind of creation of animation, I think you'll be kind of engaged with what's going on. I think you'll look past the kind of weirdness and craziness of the whole material itself. But it really is a unique experience. It's one like watching the 48 frames per second type of scenario where it literally is not going to be for everyone, but it gives you a new kind of lens into, you know, expanding upon the 24 frames a second, expanding upon the traditional filmmaking, expanding upon what World War II can be and so on and so forth. So... I think it's just, I think it's a really neat idea. Idea. I think it's a really inventive idea. I just don't think it works 100% of the time, which is because this is the first film, it gives them a chance to experiment and kind of create better and better films as they get down the road where they get to a point where it's just so seamless and powerful and uh, it looks good that it just becomes a great type of film. And so my main issue with this entire miniseries is not the animation, it's not you know, the character Felix Sparks itself. It's the idea of it only being four episodes, about 40 minutes each. Now, that's like a three-hour movie, if you want to put it in that perspective. And it's not saying that it's not good, it's not entertaining, you're not getting true knowledge of Felix Sparks himself. But the thing that makes Band of Brothers, or From Earth to the Moon, or even The Pacific, and so on and so forth, so good, is they took ten episodes... And they slowly built this group, this infantry. They gave them a lot of meat on the bone. They gave them a lot of character development that is very quickly run through in this four-part miniseries that those characters, especially in Band of Brothers, you felt all the pain. You felt all the hurt. You felt all the triumphs. You felt all the excitement. You felt everything and every emotion that you could feel in the aspects of you know watching from a TV set of what, these, what the horrors and what the situation of these people in world war ii had to go through now with that said when you're with the thunderbirds you're only with them for a certain amount of time and it's very short and unfortunately these members in this, in this miniseries will die because it's world war ii but it doesn't feel like felix sparks's character is given a lot of depth and material he feels like he's a character that is explored pretty decently but he's also a character that just doesn't feel like he's given a lot of of love sometimes it feels like you constantly fast forwarding through his life to the point where you eventually get to the last episode and you're like oh wow that's it i i was four episodes and i really feel like i missed out on a lot of his life and a lot of his character moments and it's a very hard thing to say because i like tv series that are a lot shorter i don't like 22 episode seasons i like the 13 to 10 episode seasons because you can you can really hone in on your script 
But when you're doing a mini series that's fully four episodes and you're having to do 500 days or however many you know, years this spans, you know, over two or plus years, you have to give it more breathing room. You have to give it more time. And so for that simple effect, I'm not saying Jeb Stewart, who was the writer and producer of the series, as well as you know, the director, didn't do a great job because it's still an entertaining series. I just think it could have added more. I think there could have been more. I think it could have been two or three more episodes. So with that said, it's a complete disappointment on that aspect, but it's still a great mini series that shows you some true horrifying stuff, but also shows you the good side of human nature and the good side of what brotherhood companionship can truly do in a very horrifying experience. So it's, it's a major problem with this mini series and it kind of, deflates it a little bit but don't go in thinking that it's not a good mini series because it really is it just i wish there was more that's just my honest opinion you may feel different but you also may not like the animation style too so that might be a bigger problem than the four episode mini series so but that's it that'll be my take on this mini series of the liberator thank you so much for watching uh let me know in the comments below what your favorite mini series about war is you know for instance is it you know, like band of brothers pacific all that good stuff but otherwise if you like my channel hit the subscribe button to join movie emporium always hit the notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next if you like this video awesome hit that like button and uh we'll see you guys on the next video peace out